How have you been, Chris? What's up, man? How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm great. Uh, you know, we got a day off tomorrow, so that's always good. And camp is a lot easier nowadays after, you know, the CBA uh, changed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. back, so. so before we get into uh, the current, let's uh, let's stroll down memory lane a little bit here. What's your memory of your dad in the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Chris? Uh, you know, I, I would say, you know, I was pretty young. I was maybe 12, 13 years old, but uh, just kind of, you know, as, as I said before, my dad and my mom never pushed on me uh, as far as how great my dad was at the sport. He was real humble about it. And, uh, you know, when he came home, he was a dad. He wasn't Howie Long, the, you know, perennial pro bowler. He was, you know, just our dad. So uh, for me, I sporadically watched him play uh, while he was playing. You know, um, I can remember being at my buddy's house when they were playing the AFC Championship game in Buffalo, and we'd take, like, lengthy breaks to play Sega Genesis. Like, I was missing most of the game. And, you know, I should be glued to the TV watching my dad, but, you know, that was a product of he didn't really kind of impose his greatness on us. And then, you know, when he when he retired and those things started happening and I started watching more of his film, uh, I was a lot more cognizant of how great he was. And, and even now when I watch uh, tape of him, I'm really impressed. He was kind of like ahead of his time a little bit, uh, the way he played and the multitude of positions he played. So that was a special weekend for him. I know coming from nothing and coming from, you know, out of nowhere as a player, uh, he's reached heights that, uh, you know, anybody would want to reach. Well, how, how does the fact that he didn't make it about football when he came home uh, and was in front of you and the rest of the family. How, how did that shape you into the person well, you are? I just think, Chris? I just think, uh, you know, the best thing a parent can do uh, that plays in the NFL, a dad can do, is you know, hopefully teach his kid uh, that they're not special um, for any reason other than you know what they bring to the table and how they treat people. You know, you're not just born special because you know, your dad played in the NFL or anything like that. You know, we're not a special family. We're lucky. Uh, you know, my, you know, my dad played a game for a living, um, and made money doing it. And, you know, my son, Waylon, he'll learn that, uh, you know, what I did for a living, um, doesn't define who I am and it doesn't make us special. So, um, you know, hopefully it just taught us a little humility and, um, you know, just, uh, context of, you know, you need good breaks to make it. Um, and a lot of hard work as well. Um, but, you know, knowing how hard this game can be and how many great players didn't get all the good breaks that maybe my dad did or somebody who, who gets to play 10, 11 you know, years in the league, uh, it takes a lot of luck too. So having humility along the way with your success. Yeah, you play, Ed, Chris Long, entering an 11th year in the National Football League. Why do you play then, Chris? Why do you, why do you think you still um, play? It's a hard thing to quit. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, as a competitor, you always feel like you, your best ball is still ahead of you. And, you know, um, there were two years uh, where I got hurt a lot and my career was really rolling before that. And uh, I feel like I just still have a chip on my shoulder where I'm trying to reprove myself. And, uh, you know, at 33, you know, I still I still feel good. I'm, I'm having a good camp. And, you know, last year I was able to pressure the quarterback at, at a really high rate. And, uh I always feel like I can get better, and I want to be a part of uh, what this team does because uh, this is one of the most special teams I've been on, and uh, and we got great guys in the locker room. I love playing in the city of Philadelphia. That would be a hard thing to walk away from uh, after everything that the city uh, went through last year on 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 the positive end of things uh, to walk away uh, after that. I mean, this city was unbelievable, and and that's my favorite part about playing for the Eagles is playing in Philly. Chris Long, Philadelphia Eagles defensive end, again here, care of uh, Applebee's, which we'll talk about in a second here on uh, the Rich Eisen Show, live from the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I mean, you're a perfect guy to ask a couple of things of, uh, of uh, current NFL storylines that are going on that we hear stories about. Um, one of them is uh, that it's not fun to play in New England. We've heard that. Uh, well, I mean, you know, uh, Amendola well, leaves. Cold. He goes to Miami. It's cold. <laughs> well, it's not. I mean, maybe cold temperature-wise, but it also well, may be cold. Uh, you know, yeah, when it well, comes it's cold to playing, and with... the sun goes down early. I mean, those those were <laughs> my biggest gripes. I mean, may, may, I don't mind cold weather. The the sun goes down at like four o'clock in the afternoon. 
Now, and... it seems like you're trying to cut me off before I ask the question, Chris, because you're a very oh, smart guy. I know where you're going, though. Go ahead. You know what? No, well, hey, but it also came from your locker room uh, yeah. during the Super Bowl last year. It's like, hey, it's more fun here. It's not fun there. Amendola leaves. He goes to Miami. He makes mention uh, ever, uh, of how it's less fun sometimes to play in New England. What, what are your thoughts on that subject? playing for well, my, thought, my thoughts the, are coming from where I've come from um, and I loved every not every minute of playing in St. Louis obviously when your team doesn't win any more than seven games in a season for eight years I mean you know I played on one of 15 teams I played on two and 14 teams I played in front of 10,000 people because the team's moving and you know we're, we're not playing well um, I've been beaten 44 to three, you know, I've been beaten 51 to seven, like that's not fun. So, you know, for me to go someplace like new England, uh, from that situation and have an opportunity to win a super bowl other than the sun going down at four o'clock in the afternoon, um, <laughs> you know, and the scheme not fitting me perfect. I, I really enjoyed my teammates and I enjoyed, uh, coming to work there. I mean, every Part of being in the NFL is complaining. Guys, you know, guys sit around and complain, and and we we complain about you know the schedule being too long, like you know the meetings are too long, practice was too long today. That's universal wherever you go, and there's different ways to to get the job done, and every organization does things differently. But I I, I had more fun than I did in, in New England, and uh, you know I, I really will cherish those memories uh, as long as I live. Chris Long here on the Rich Eisen Show, and then obviously the other subject that's going on and with the NFL is the anthem rule and what's been going on, um, obviously, from uh, Pennsylvania Avenue and then the state of Pennsylvania with the invitation and not invitation. What has it been like for you, Chris Long, and your teammates uh, to read the headlines and be uh, mentioned in the headlines and in tweets? Um, what has the, this whole process been like for you? Well, it really hasn't been hard. I mean, um, we're, we're a really close team, and, um, you know, there's certainly guys with different political leanings or whatever. That's the NFL. Um, but there, I can't think of one situation in our locker room where there's been, like, um, you know, tension or a disagreement. Um, you know, we all love each other. We, we, we've accomplished a lot together, and we've, um, and we, we've done a lot. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot left to do as a team. And so – uh, we honestly, it sounds boring and cliche, but we think about football. And when it's time to answer questions and stand up for our beliefs, we can do that too. But, you know, when we're at work uh, and we talk about a host of, of issues that have nothing to do with football in the lunchroom or in meeting rooms, but, um, you know, this is a brotherhood. And, um, you know, when it's time to work, it's time to work. So, you know, in training camp, all those distractions go away. And to be honest, most of the time, they're not even distractions to us. When we read about possible distractions or, you know, is the White House thing, you know, a distraction for the Eagles, it couldn't be further from a distraction in our building. We're a really tight team, and, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff is, is media um, created. Um, and, and until we show that we, that, that we, we falter because of something like that, uh, I don't think it's fair to say, you know, uh, that it's a distraction for us or, or, or it's made it harder on us. I mean, we, we, we've we gone about our business as a tight, tight-knit group and, and worried about our job. Or all, on occasion, president created because, I mean, I, I mean. Yeah, no doubt Eagles, about it. <laughs> well, the Eagles, the Eagles did not kneel during the national anthem last year, right? And no, so, I mean, um, yeah, no, the, the only part, the only part that stuck out that really, that really even surprised me by, by those standards was when uh, a news network ran, um, you know, footage of guys praying in the end zone um, over as B-roll for a segment about how the Eagles are unpatriotic and and did all this kneeling and stuff. Not that you know kneeling is unpatriotic, but you you see what I'm saying. So I mean, it, it just got so ridiculous at, at a point. But in our locker room, we don't feel that. I mean, we don't. We, that doesn't even register. Um, you know, in our locker room conversations. It doesn't register, you know, in the vibe in the locker room. We don't watch TV, you know. Uh, we're not worried about what people are, are speculating might be the mood in the locker room. Our, our mood in our locker room is, is always sky high. I mean, we are a really tight group, and we've been through a lot, and we've accomplished a lot, and we want to do more. So, uh, and one last question for you before we hit uh, on Applebee's is the, the new helmet rule that we saw last night. Um, draw three flags where you're not supposed to lead with your helmet. Um, 
and, and hit somebody and what happened in your locker room uh, potentially with a disagreement amongst officials? What happened there? Uh, no, I mean, you know, we always – in any NFL locker room, you're going to have an officials meeting before um, to kick off the year. And a lot of times the competition committee has come up with some new rules and uh, there's going to be, you know, changes made. And, uh, you know, the NFL is trying to stay ahead of the curve with the with the safety stuff. And obviously the NFL wants the offenses to prosper in our league. So a lot of defensive players, when we get, you know, kind of handed these new rules um, – you know, without a say, we, we don't love it. Um, you know, it's not just the helmet rules. There's some rules about you can't land on the quarterback with all your weight um, or most of your weight. Um, right. You know, that's more the Anthony concerning. Barr rule. Yeah. Uh, what'd you say? The, Ant- uh, the Anthony Barr rule pretty much, yeah, right? Yeah. But- I mean, it's hard, man. I mean, uh, listen, I know the NFL is trying to do the right thing safety-wise sometimes, and there, <laughs> there's always going to be a little bit of hysteria and um, – there's always going to be a, a you know a, a, a time frame where uh, people don't know exactly what's going on, but I think by the middle of the year, maybe even the first quarter of the year, it'll be a little bit more predictable and people will kind of understand what's the actual threshold for calling some of these penalties. I think some of them are, are guidelines and and uh, they won't be called to the letter of the law always. I hope. And what and what is the uh, what are the guidelines and rules of team chicken tenders versus team riblets? Uh, well, I think in the Chris summer Wilson. when the temperatures are up around 100 degrees, <clears throat> I, I like a lighter fare, and uh, mm-hmm. you know for me that's chicken tenders all day long. And Applebee's, you know, when my brother and I shot uh, the uh, Applebee's commercial and he was eating riblets and I was eating chicken tenders, it was like eight in the morning. I probably ate 26 chicken tenders. <laughs> I'm not lying to you, and uh, and they were delicious. It was a great breakfast. It was light, it was crispy, um, and I think you should get down to Applebee's by by the twelfth here coming up because that's when uh, the special ends uh, at Applebee's. It's 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 a lovely place, and uh, and the chicken tenders are delicious. Fantastic! Uh, all you can eat riblets and chicken tenders. They're back at Applebee's. Before I let you go, tell me about Waterboys. What's the latest with this one? Chris, uh, well, thank you for asking, Rich. Uh, water Boys, uh, as you know, it's it's my clean water initiative where we do large, sustainable solar-powered wells in, in East Africa uh, primarily. But <clears throat> we're getting ready. We're gearing up to do some domestic stuff this year, which is really exciting because people are always asking, you know, what are you doing in, in America? So uh, more to come on that, um, but I'm very excited about it. Uh, we have funded our 45th large solar-powered well. And uh, as soon as that's in the ground, we'll have 160,000 people uh, drinking clean water from our, our wells. Uh, we finished our really successful Kilimanjaro climb with our uh, wounded veterans and retired players this past February. And uh, there'll be the NFL Films is doing a documentary uh, on it, and that'll be coming out in the fall. So I'm really excited about that. You know, hopefully the platform's improving, and people can check it out at waterboys.org. Yeah, I, at waterbuys.org, it's a great organization. I'm glad to hear that you're doing stuff domestically, you know, with what went down in Flint, Michigan, when we were in uh, D.C. for the uh, Baseball Hall of Fame, that we were being told to boil water potentially while we're down there. So drinking water is a serious issue yeah, here in America scary. as well. And, you know, the Flint thing, we, we opened a fund immediately to try to, uh, we, you know, we pitched in and opened a fund, but uh, it didn't gain much traction. I think that's sad. I think we can all do better domestically, and uh, you know our infrastructure's got to improve. And so we'll hopefully shed some light on some some uh, potentially avoiding the next Flint and use our platform to ask the right questions and push people to uh, to to you know do a little self inventory on on our water here in the states. Chris, you're the best. Thanks for calling in. We'll chat soon, hopefully. Thanks a lot, man. You bet. Chris Long at Joel number nine one O N E on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.